IP. Is it worth compiling Rust to run Wasm in the browser to build UIs on the web? In this video, we'll start using Rust to build our first web UI and deploy it while consuming the JSON API we built in the last few videos. So now we have a conundrum. Which Rust and Wasm web framework do we actually use? I tend to be an early adopter, so I went with Leptos, which happened to hit 0.1 while I was developing the series. The other two major choices to me were U, which just got server-side rendering in 0.20, and Sycamore, or Perseus, which supports a lot of the modern rendering strategies that you would find in something like Next.js. The choice to use Leptos is arbitrary, and that's why this video isn't named Choosing a Rust Wasm Web Framework. If I was doing work for a client, I probably would have used one of the libraries that's been around longer and is a little bit more stable. So that would be U or Perseus with Sycamore. This is simply because up until this month, Leptos didn't have an official release and putting a client on something that doesn't even have an official release is asking for churn, basically. I'm also using Leptos' server-side rendering functionality for similarly arbitrary reasons. It seems like a great way to exercise the maximal usage of the framework. I don't particularly really need server-side rendering though. So after scaffolding a bunch of code, writing a couple routes, writing a couple components, I ran the client-side build and you guessed it, cores. <laughs> Well, at least the request was sending to the server. Dropping some cores headers into Axum, which is the server we're using to run Leptos, isn't that hard. It's just a matter of using Tower HTTP. And this really shows the benefits of Axum's integration with the Tower ecosystem, in my opinion. So while you may not need rate limiting or one of these other fancier tools, you probably will need something like cores. After a bit of logic shuffling, since the example that I found for doing HTTP requests in Leptos threw away a bunch of error handling, I successfully fetched some data from the Axum API and rendered it on the page. I've definitely had to, up to this point, spend more time building out the UI than I did setting up the database or even building the JSON API. This is partially due to my lack of understanding with Leptos and partially due to my depth of understanding with Axum and PlanetScale and Fly.io, which I've all used before. At this point, it was about 500 lines of code and I was done for the day. So tomorrow we've actually got to test the server-side rendering, hydrate it, and then deploy it. Since we already have a platform that we've chosen to deploy the API on, fly.io, that's the platform that I also chose to deploy Leptos on. And we've done this before in this series, so it should be easier. First, we need to confirm that we actually know how to build something for production. We add a just task because I'm using just files as a replacement for make to build out the production wasm as well as the production server binary. We'll need both of these to actually run this application on fly the server binary running on fly and the wasm hydrating on the client. Then a Docker file. This is very similar to the JSON API's Docker file with a little bit more copying for the wasm bundle, for example, because we're not just copying the binary into the final container, we're also copying the wasm bundle. We run fly launch to get a fly.toml and a deployment and no luck, it crashed. Checking the logs showed an exit code 127, which means that it couldn't find the binary to actually run. So it's time to crack open Docker for Mac locally and do a build and see what's going on. Except that containers on the M1, which is the laptop I'm using, are different than our deployment platform on fly.io. So we do a quick swap to do wasm pack via cargo install instead of curling a pre-built binary and we're back to the races again. But once again, due to platform issues, the build broke and after tired of being incidentally breaking my build with things that are unrelated to my application, I just disabled the wasm build entirely. Previous layers also weren't caching as I was doing my Docker builds. So I decided to just not deal with debugging Docker right now and try to work on my application more. The issue turned out to be an issue with libssl, which is a behavior I know is consistent with the request crate and specifically a dependency inside of request called ring. Ring is the underlying cryptographic library for request, which we are using on the server side to make requests, HTTP requests, that is. One solution is to switch to Rust TLS, a Rust implementation of the security that we're going to need. This is done by enabling the feature in the request crate inside of our dependencies. Not too bad. In the end, I'm not sure why the SSL issue didn't show up in logs anywhere on fly, for example, but I was able to build and run the container locally and actually debug what was really going on. After a successful deploy, I loaded the URL to the site and, oh, forgot to re-enable the Wasm bundle, so it's just not there. It's easy enough to fix, but we can see without the Wasm bundle that the app still works with a server-side render, 
So we uncomment the copy in the Docker file and we're back. In any case, this was a good example of Leptos working without a client-side hydration. The total size of the site was about nine kilobytes, which really isn't a size that matters to us at all and doesn't have any meaning because it doesn't have any of the WASM that we're going to include later, which will blow this size up quite a bit. But you could definitely use this approach to build a server-side rendered only application. And if you saw the video on server functions that I did a little while ago, you'll know that these have a fallback to actually being able to run as form submissions missions rather than needing the WASM to be around. With the WASM actually being served, we boosted up to about 250 kilobytes being served, which again, isn't a number that's super important to us right now, especially since we aren't actually benchmarking anything. And since the performance characteristics of loading WASM compared to loading JavaScript are different and we're not doing benchmarking, I'll leave you with these initial considerations, but don't take them too strongly. Okay, so we've got a full working loop running in production now. UI rendering on the server, hydration happening on the client, we're hitting the API, and we're talking to the database. There's a few other features that we'll need for full functionality for the site to actually work. This includes things like user sign-in, a solution for styling, currently I'm using Tailwind, and then other features that the site depends on like video playback. I imagine that building sign-in and then sign-up will actually take quite a while, so we'll take the opportunity in the next video to cover styling before we eventually get into authentication. While I'm very confident in my choices for PlanetScale database, Axum as the API, and Fly as the deployment choice, I'm less confident in my choice with Leptos. It's an emerging framework that just had its first release and has quite a few changes that happened while I was developing this application. So the next videos will explore what it means to actually have to build something with Rust and Wasm and how we integrate with the rest of the ecosystem to provide solutions for things that we already have solved in the JavaScript version of the site. So have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.